Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and we're going to look at a patient here who has anterior knee pain, and we have given them a diagnosis of patellar tracking disorder. And so people who have patellar tracking disorders have abnormal mechanics of stress in the anterior compartment, and the patella uh, will have arthritis, and it may sublux out of position, and um, they can have anterior knee pain and patella femoral instability. And so here we go. We're going to start with a side view here. We're going to measure the height of the patella, and we're also going to measure the length of the patellar tendon. Now the patellar tendon should be always longer than the height of the patella. So if the patella measures three, then the patellar tendon should measure three or three times 1.5. So it can be one and a half times longer than the patella. But if it's more than one and a half times longer than the patella, then we say that the patellar tendon is too long or congenitally elongated, and we call that patella alta, because when the patellar tendon is too long, the patella will be high in position and again, we call that patella alta, and that can be associated with patella femoral instability or abnormal mechanics of stress, and, and it can lead to a tracking disorder. Now, I see that pretty regularly at patella alta, and they have no problems at all up here, so it's, it's not always the case, but it's something definitely to look for. So I always start off with this view and just look and see now is the patellar tendon length one and a half times or more, or is it less than one? So we'll measure the height of the patellar tendon and also the measure of the height of the patella and find out. So we're going to start off with the patella and see the height or length of the patella here. It's uh, about 3 or 3.1. We'll say 3.1. Now we're going to measure the length of the patellar uh, tendon here. So we know that the patellar tendon has to be at least 3. It looks like it's definitely more than 3, but it has to be less than 4.7 to be one and a half times. So if it's over 4.7, then we're going to call it patella alta. So we'll measure that and it looks like it's way over 4.7. So we say the patellar tendon is congenitally elongated with high patellar position, indicating patella alta. Now we're going to go to the axial images here and take a look. And on this axial image, we see a few things. Number one, they do have lateral patellar subluxation and lateral patellar tilt. So the patella is subluxed laterally. The epicenter of the patella is hard to see. They have a congenitally elongated lateral patellar facet and a very small medial facet that doesn't even articulate with the uh, femur here, a congenital variant, but very broad, flat lateral patellar facet. The epicenter may be right here. Hard to even see where the epicenter is. But the trochlea, if we go over here to the trochlea, we also have an abnormality here. Here's the uh, central part of the trochlea. So the patella should be about right here, but instead it's sublux laterally. Also, again, the patella is not just sublux, but it's also tilted. The horizontal uh, lateral facet here, if we take a line, Along the plane of the lateral patellar facet, from here to here, we see that it breaks the plane of horizontal. If this is horizontal, and we uh, take the plane here, let me see. I'll do that now. See, it's less than horizontal, so they have lateral patellar tilt. So mild lateral patellar subluxation and lateral patellar tilt. And now we're going to go to the trochlea again and look at the depth. So that there's a shallow trochlear sulcus, too, instead of being... Very deep, um, a very deep V where the patella sits deep inside there, very snug and secure. Instead, this is a very shallow trochlear sulcus. And when it's shallow like this, the patella can easily slide. It's not locked in there very well. So they have a lot of the classic findings. Lateral patellar subluxation, lateral patellar tilt, congenitally shallow trochlear sulcus. And with the patella femoral instability or abnormal mechanics of stress here, we have loss of the cartilage, we have little tiny cystic erosions, we have lateral patellofemoral spurring. So this is a patient with anterior knee pain, and they do have uh, patellar tracking disorder and symptoms related to the patellofemoral arthropathy and instability. And they had a few little other findings, but uh, nothing else of significance except for this little popliteal cyst. So thank you very much.